Hello everybody and welcome to this video. Today I'm going to talk about how to get started with um, background geolocation in React Native. So if you ever wanted to do like a fitness app or something, background geolocation can be very useful because you can um, track the person uh, while the uh, app is down. So you can get uh, so the user is not um, limited to having the app open, which is very, very smart. And uh, yeah, this guide can also be useful to you if you just want to get started with some geolocation stuff, some more advanced stuff. Okay. So as you can see here on the screen, I have the an app open. I'm gonna come back to that in a moment. Uh, first, I want to go to Google Chrome. So. If you are getting started with um, geolocation in React Native and you do a quick Google search, you will probably find two uh, repositories that have a React Native background geolocation implementation. Um, and one of them is this one. Uh, this one is a paid one though uh, from TransistorSoft and um, yeah, the other one is uh, this one, Maron85. Um, and uh, as far as I understand, these two both do the same thing or a very similar thing um, from this uh, article here. So uh, I would suggest just going with this one since the other one is paid. And this is also the one I'm using in my project. And um, yeah, background geolocation is pretty um, complicated, I would say. So you definitely need to reach out for a library to do this if you want to do it cross-platform uh, immediately. Um, and I've been using this one in my app so far, and so far it's been running pretty great. So the way I got started with this one uh, is um, I basically scrolled down here and copied this quick example here. Um, that shows um, how to uh, configure background geolocation and then a bunch of the callbacks here on start and error, on stop, on background, foreground and so on and so on. I basically copied this whole thing uh, into a component of my, um, of my own and then modified this a sl uh, slightly bit. And I'm going to show you just in a moment how I did that. So before I never get away from this page, uh, just a big, quick disclaimer here. We um this first line was a little confusing for me, but since it's saying we are moving, npm package is now this, even though we are already in this page. Don't get too confused about that one, okay? All right, let's jump back into the code here. So just gonna minimize Chrome here. All right, so we're back in the code and. As you can see on the left, I have some of this code that might seem a little bit familiar. It's basically me copy pasting in the example code here. And I have added a few things of my own. So the first thing I did is I um, made a class component instead. And then I made it kind of into a hook since uh, it's not really going to be rendering anything. We're going to have a bunch of functionality in here um that will depend on location tracking right so i renamed it to use tracking which is this um, a very common syntax for when you are doing any type of hooks you want to use a uh, use and then whatever name you give the hook okay so i just called mine use tracking and uh, basically what i did i put everything inside a uh, use effect here and um, in the beginning, I just configure my background geolocation and I'm using a lot of the same uh, standard uh, properties so far um, in my configuration here, except for debug, I kind of removed that one since I um, didn't want all those messages displayed all the time. It wasn't really too useful for me. and. Um, on, uh, on location here, I am doing some things here. So I'm going to explain 
in a bit what that's about. Okay, so before moving on to that, I want to mention these three pieces of state that I defined. So when, uh, let's jump to the app actually just for a moment. So when you're working with a geolocation app, you, prob you usually want to, first of all, you want to track the location of the person. That's one. And then if you're doing any kind of fitness app or like tracking movement around, you want to define a history of where this person has been. Okay. And since I'm doing a fitness kind of app, I'm also tracking the distance here. Okay. Location, history and distance. These are the three things. These are very common things that you want to be tracking. Okay. So if I go to this app here and I click that little uh, plus there, I um, basically start the app here and you can see this timer starts and uh, here you can see the, the distance. So currently my simulator is set up to uh, simulate a drive onto the highway. Okay, so if you go up to up here on the top, you can go to features and then on the location, you can choose some different things here, like custom location, you can simulate a freeway drive, city run, bicycle ride, whatever. And currently I have mine set to freeway drive. So in here it will um, update the location as if I'm driving on the highway here. And this is a great way to uh, test out my implementation over here, okay? So you can see I set the location provider to distance filter provider here. And you can change this if you want a little, a bit more frequent updates here. As you can see on my right, it's not really updating too often. Uh, it's not really updating too often here. So you can change this one if you want that. But this one is, this is okay actually for me. And as you can see, we're moving around here and the distance is being updated here. So now I want to show you the logic for determining this distance. So if you scroll down to on location, so every time it registers that the location has been updated, first of all, I'm updating my location, very simple. Um, from the location, um, um, uh, from the location here in my callback function, I can just grab latitude and longitude and update that location right away, yeah? And then for the history and the distance, uh, it's also pretty simple. So to calculate the history, right, we just grab the latitude and the longitude and then we just put that into an array basically. So down here you can see I'm updating my history. I'm taking the previous history and then I'm just concatting uh, the current latitude and longitude on, uh, on top of that. Now for the distance, uh, what I do is to calculate that, I just take the uh, previous distance that was calculated, right? And then I just plus um, the distance. Oh, sorry. Then I just uh, use this function. I'm going to show this function in a moment. But this function takes uh, the latest item. So the latest item is the uh, last item in my history array right, the latitude and longitude of that one, and then my r most recent locations, latitude and longitude. And then I basically just use this function, which is a function I googled. Uh, I don't know how to calculate the distance between two points, but I just googled this function, uh, and it looks like this right here. And then I get the distance in kilometers between the two points, okay? And uh, this is a pretty uh, basic start, I would say. Uh, if you want to get started with uh, tracking geolocation and geolocation in the background, this is uh, a good starting point at least. As you can see here, over here on my right, um, I'm keep, I keep updating the location of this guy here and I keep uh, updating the distance here as well by grabbing this variable. 
and currently the history is not really shown in this view but it's uh, being um, calculated in the background and one last thing I want to say about this hook, this use tracking hook, is I pass in a, a prop here, is active, and that's because I may uh, at some point choose to pause, so pause it, and then uh, I don't want uh, any functionality going on at this point. I don't want any distance or location tracking or anything, so. Um, when I click pause here, I'm passing in false to this hook, uh, meaning that in my use effect, uh, use effect here, I'm just going to return immediately and stop doing any kind of operations here. Okay. And uh, just to show you where this hook is called. So if I go inside my home screen here, uh, at the very top, uh, I have my use uh, tracking hook here where I destruct out location, history, and distance. And I'm passing in status equal to running as my is active prop here. Okay. All right, guys, I hope you learned something from this video what library to pick up, um, how to get started uh, with my library of choice, and uh, how you would go on about rewriting uh, the example into a hook based approach if you like um, react hooks and functional components and uh, how the calculations would be done just for some simple history distance and location uh, tracking okay cool guys if you like this video give it a like and if not i'll see you in the next one